for Holy Communion begins on page 67 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe, we beseech thee to direct sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Proper's appointed for the ninth Sunday after Trinity begin on page 200 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee the spirit to thank and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without thee may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle is written in the 10th chapter of St. Paul the Apostle's first epistle to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. Brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Here endeth the epistle.
Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning in the 11th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, but no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best, best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. Yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots. Thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to thee, to thee Lord, Lord Christ. Christ.
Please be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome. Good to see all of you here today on this ninth Sunday after Trinity. We're especially glad to have those of you visiting with us today. We hope you feel at home here. Uh, there is a guest register, which is located in the narthex, which you could sign, or if you prefer, there's a visitor card in the pew back in front of you. If you'd like to fill that out, you can put that in the offering plate as it comes around a little later. Uh, we'd like to be able to send you a note thanking you for being here with us. Also, as you go through the double doors on the right, there's a low table that has some visitor packets. It'll tell you a little bit more about our church. So feel free to grab one of those on the way out. We do also invite you to come over after the service next door in our parish hall. We have coffee and donuts and a time of fellowship. So I hope you'll come over and join us. Uh, kind of a light week this week at a, a, for a change. Uh, we do have grief share this afternoon at 4 o'clock p.m. over in the Schleicher Library. Daily offices, uh, morning prayer at 8.30 and evening prayer at 4.30 each day during the week. Uh, Wednesday, we do have our noon Eucharist with Holy Unction. Um, <clears throat> also a reminder that the Christmas in July gifts are due today. Uh, so hope you brought those in so we can get those to the folks over at Collinwood uh, Nursing Home. Uh, next Sunday, uh, between the services, we're going to have our mid-year update. And so we'll tell you a little bit about uh, where we stand on the finances, where things stand on starting the building and some other things like that. So I hope you'll plan on being here next week uh, uh, in between the services. Then coming up on Tuesday night, August the 6th, that's the Feast of the Transfiguration. So we're going to have one service that evening. We'll have daily uh, morning prayer that morning, but one service in the evening, 630. Uh, we'll have a Eucharist here, and then afterwards an ice cream social that's going to be sponsored by St. James Brotherhood. So it'll be a good... Uh, Good time to get together and come out for that important feast. Well, other announcements, as always, make sure you check the bulletin behind me. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week that we can pray for? Okay, well, let's continue our worship with our sermon hymn, hymn number 602, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. One of the petitions in the prayer which our Lord Jesus taught us is, lead us not into temptation. Since this is a daily prayer, this means that temptation is a daily reality. If this is true, then it is important that we think rightly about temptation. Given this petition, we should not be surprised when we are tempted, nor should we assume that being tempted is a personal failure. In fact, being tempted is not a sin. After all, we know that Jesus <clears throat> was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. Rather, it is giving in to temptation. That's where we cross the line into sin. As long as we live in this fallen world, temptation will be a part of our daily lives. St. Paul teaches on this very subject in our epistle lesson today, and he does so by appealing to a story, the story of Israel in the wilderness after they had been delivered out of slavery in Egypt. He appeals to this story in order to connect the lives of Christians with the experiences of Israel. He says at the beginning, Brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now, this is a remarkable statement since in the church at Corinth was certainly made up of most, if not all, Gentiles. But this is his way of linking their experiences. It is stated in such a way that Christians are called to view the Israelites as our fathers. Furthermore, he goes on to link their privileges as God's people with ours. Their passing through the Red Sea was their baptism. Their guidance by the cloud was likened to our guidance by the Holy Spirit. Their partaking of the manna and the water from the rock is liking, likened to our receiving of the spiritual food of the Eucharist. They, like us, were granted many benefits by God. And these benefits were designed to empower and encourage them on their journey toward their destination, which was the promised land. The same is true of us. God has led us on our own exodus through baptism. He has given us his spirit to lead and guide us on our journey. He feeds and nourishes us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of Christ. And he has promised us our eternal destination, the new heavens and earth. So far, so good. But then the apostle drops a bombshell. He says of the Israelites, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. Even though they had been given such great privileges, they squandered them. And the apostle is warning the Corinthian Christians that they were in danger of doing the same by giving in to various temptations. And if this was a danger for them, then it's also a danger for us. He then enumerates precisely where the Israelites went, went wrong. There were four stumbling blocks, which are categorized here as, quote, lusting after evil things. First, the Israelites broke God's covenant by engaging in idolatry. You'll remember that while Moses was up on the mountain meeting with God, they were down in the camp molding an idol in the form of a golden calf. Second, to make matters worse, in Moses' absence, they began to engage in sexual immorality. That is what is behind the euphemism that they sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Third, they put the Lord to the test. And fourth, they grumbled or murmured incessantly about being forced to eat manna day after day. 
At one point, or several points, they even longed to return to Egypt. Sounds like madness. All of this is the precursor to the apostles warning us about our own temptation. As I noted earlier, temptation is a reality of life. No one escapes it. But the question is, how will we respond when we are tempted? By telling us this story, St. Paul is illustrating for us what not to do. We should not emulate our forefathers in the faith regarding what they did in the wilderness. In unfolding this, he gives us or warns us of two potential ditches which lie on either side of our path. On the one side, there is the ditch which we will call the sin of presumption. This is what he is warning about when he writes, quote, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. In other words, if you are so proud that you think that you're exempt from temptation, you have already fallen into a trap. If we think that we will escape temptation, we are either uninformed or delusional. Instead of denying the reality of temptation, we are called constantly to be on the lookout for it. We need to watch and pray, to quote our Lord's words to his disciples, lest we enter into temptation. If you think about it, presuming that we are beyond being tempted is really a matter of pride. And that is exactly what the apostle is telling us to guard against. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. This echoes this famous passage from the book of Proverbs which says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. We usually condense this down just to say, pride goeth before a fall. If we presume that we cannot be tempted, we are bound to fail. So presuming that we cannot fall into temptation is one ditch. The ditch on the other side of our path is despair. The apostle addresses this in our text where he writes, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Once again, we're reminded of the common experience of temptation. We should not despair when we face temptation because every other Christian before us has had the same experience. We all face different temptations, but we all face temptation. Having said that, St. Paul then reminds us that God is faithful and that whenever we are faced with a temptation, he always provides a way of escape. In other words, we do not have to fail. At every temptation, there is a fork in the road. Simply stated, there is a path that would lead us to God, and there is a path that would lead us away from Him. What we need to do in those instances of temptation is to look to God and to ask Him to show us the right way. The apostle tells us that He always provides one. We don't have to despair when we face temptation because God is good to provide us a way of escape. Now here is where our Lord's own temptation in the wilderness is instructive for us. He was facing greater temptations than we will ever face. But he overcame those temptations and won a cosmic victory over the prince of darkness for us. His manner of escaping temptation then serves as an example for us. To each of the devil's three temptations, he responded by quoting the word of God. This shows us that one of the reasons why God gave us Holy Scripture is to equip us to respond 
as our Lord did in the midst of temptation. St. Paul even tells us twice in our text regarding Israel's story, which is recorded for us, these things were written for our instruction or our admonition. If we would be properly equipped in the midst of temptation, we will need to appeal to the things that were written for our instruction in Holy Scripture. The second means of help for us in our journey is prayer. I've already noted that this topic of temptation is included in the prayer which our Lord taught us. And I've echoed Jesus' instruction to watch and pray, which he gave to his disciples. Watch and pray lest you enter temptation. Notice the central part that prayer plays regarding temptation. But even when we fail, when we fall into temptation, God does not close the door on us. Like the father in Jesus' parable this morning, he will welcome prodigals who return to him in repentance. Beloved, let us be realistic about the matter of temptation. We will all face it. The question is, how will we respond? May God give us grace not to be presumptuous and not to despair. Let us look to him at every moment of our weakness, seeking him out. Let us appeal to Holy Scripture and to prayer. And when we fail, notice when, when we fail, let us remember that God is our loving Father who awaits our return and our repentance and is willing to forgive. Amen. And now let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. <clears throat>
Our service continues on page 74 of your prayer books. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, <clears throat> we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Now for those joining us by live stream, a prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen. service continues on the middle of page 83 of your prayer books. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high.
Let us pray. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.